One of the newest credits I got this week when I was in the Houston area was Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk in Kima, Texas. This ride has to be one of the most intense woodies I have ever ridden. It is packed with top-notch airtime, as well as some all-right laterals. Boardwalk Bullet opened in August of 2007 and continues to be the most popular attraction at Kima Boardwalk, naturally. And it only costs $6 to ride, which is great. I know some other roller coasters that are ridiculously overpriced. Iron Shark at Galveston Island Historic Pleasure Pier, for example, is $16, and West Coaster at Pacific Park on the Santa Monica Pier is $10, which is ridiculous. But this ride is much cheaper to ride, and it's much better than both of them. This ride is situated in the Saltgrass Junction section of Kima Boardwalk, and it lies right on the coast of Trinity Bay, which gives this ride a very nice setting and makes it very pleasant to look at. Speaking of setting, this ride is surprisingly themed very well. More well-themed than coasters at some major theme parks, actually. If you didn't know, Boardwalk Bullet isn't themed to guns or bullets. Well, at least not entirely. But I'd say overall, it's themed to the Old West, which is evident in the queue line, where you could see a bunch of artifacts and newspaper clippings talking about the Pony Express. And even in the exit of the ride, where you come across an old saloon with a holding cell, which offers some great photo ops. There really isn't any theming on the coaster itself, but it still gives some great views of the city of Kima, the waterfront surrounding the park, the sailboat docks nearby, Trinity Bay, as well as the Gulf of Mexico. Before getting into the ride experience, let's get over some stats. This ride was of course designed by the Gravity Group, and unlike most of their other coasters, this ride was not manufactured by their sister company, the Gravity Craft Corporation, but instead is manufactured by Martin and Vlaminks, which is mainly known for installing rides and not manufacturing them. Boardwalk Bullet stands at 96 feet tall, has a 92 foot drop at a 56 degree angle, goes 51 miles per hour, lasts about a minute 45 seconds, and has 3,236 feet of track. And speaking of track, it is really, really difficult to tell where the coaster is, where it's going, or where it came from, because this ride is extremely compact. This has to be the most compact coaster I've ever ridden. Most of the track is really difficult to see because the ride actually goes underneath itself multiple times. 42 times, in fact. Yeah, 42 times. This ride has 42 track crossovers, which is the most of any wooden coaster in the world, which further proves my statement of this being the most compact coaster I've ever ridden. It even dives under the station at one point, which is also where it takes your photo. And I thought that was so cool. This ride uses trains from PTC or Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters, and the seats can be kind of small for larger people, but I personally didn't have a problem with them. The ride does have two trains, but usually only runs with one train ops because the park rarely ever gets packed. So waiting in line is usually not a problem, but the operations for this ride are very, very slow. When I went, dispatches took between three to six minutes, which I was not a fan of. The employees also get really mad if you pull down your own lap bar and will slow down operations even more if you do so to open all closed lap bars again. So if you go, don't pull down your own lap bar. The ride does have bins on the platform, so don't worry about getting a locker. Let's move into the ride experience now. So you start off by taking a right hand dip out of the station and onto the 96 foot tall lift hill. Going up the lift, you get to take in all the sights of Trinity Bay, as well as the rest of the boardwalk, the sailboat dock, as well as downtown Houston and Kima. It really is a beautiful sight. Once at the top, you take a sharp left-hand turn into the 92-foot tall drop at a 56-degree angle. And if you're in the back, prepare to go flying. I think personally that Boardwalk Bullet has one of the best wooden coaster drops, and it has my personal favorite woody drop for now. In the back, you will be out of your seat the whole way down. Okay, so you drop underneath the structure and then take a swift right-hand turn into a small pop of airtime, which surprised me on my first ride through because it actually gives some great ejector, which this ride does great. This ride is almost all ejector with a few small floater moments in between, which I love. I mostly prefer ejector air, but I do also love some great floater. The hill itself is actually pretty low to the ground, which I thought was very cool. However, if you sit in the very last car, this hill can be kind of rough, so my advice is to not sit in a wheel seat. Also, be aware that this part of the ride hugs the side of the queue line, so if you're standing in the queue when the train is entering this element, 
be prepared to be shaken around because the queue is actually built into the structure of the ride. And when the train passes by, it actually shakes the structure. So the queue will too. And it's a very weird experience. It's not one that I hate, but it can become kind of jarring after a while. After this small airtime pop, you quickly take a small left-hand turn and quickly turn right and enter this massive turn. Think of it like a wooden S-curve. And I'm actually not sure what you'd call this next element. It's kind of like a drawn-out bank turn, and it's pretty intense. It's also a very picturesque part of the ride, especially from inside the exit of the ride. And actually, most of the footage you're seeing of this element was actually taken from either inside the station or the exit. And that's another thing. It's really hard to get footage of this ride from outside the queue because, again, the ride kind of wraps around itself. So you have to be inside the structure to see most of the track. After the drawn-out bank turn, the ride then climbs up into this really tall turnaround and enters the second tallest draw and quickly hits another small airtime pop, which absolutely blew me away on my first ride. Like, holy crap, that thing was insane. It's insane in the front car, but in the back, it's a whole other experience. You will be out of your seat the whole time on that element. The ride then takes a left into another bank turn underneath the first bank turn, which again proves how compact this thing is. And the bank turn once again offers some average laterals, and it then pops into arguably the ride's first speed floater hill, which also interacts with a nearby salt grass acting as a kind of near miss, and it's very well done. This hill is also placed right next to the station, and the hill banks towards the station, which I think looks very nice. After the first floater hill, the ride then takes another small left-hand turn into another floater hill, which once again offers some good floater, nothing hardcore, but it gets the job done. The train then slowly banks to the left into a small hill that doesn't really offer too much air, and then drops underneath the station, which I think is so cool. It just shows how much this ride interacts with itself. It goes over and underneath itself to fit into an acre of space. And the track underneath the station actually goes underneath the boardwalk itself in order to be as compact as it is, which I think is very smart. So after dropping under the station, your on-ride photo will be taken and the train then takes a tight right-hand turn into a great pop of ejector and continues to bank to the right underneath the first bank turn. The ride continues into another small pop of air and up into another tall hill, which unfortunately is where the ride begins to slow down. The ride then enters yet another small pop of air, which doesn't do much, then banks left and takes a right turn into another small airtime moment, which you go through kind of slow before banking to the right and hitting one final small airtime pop into the brakes. I thought it was kind of weird how after the turn from under the station, the ride just starts to slow down, but if you watch the Gravity Group animation of this ride from 2007, you'll see that the ride goes through those last few elements, as well as other parts of the ride, faster than how it actually goes through it today. Another weird thing I noticed about the track is that in a few places throughout the ride, such as the last turn into the brakes and the tall hill that precedes it, there are actually anti-rollbacks placed on them. Again, if you saw the Gravity Group's animation for Boardwalk Bullet in 2007, you may notice that the ride is going a bit faster than how fast it goes now. The slower speed throughout some parts of the ride and the anti-rollbacks are there because of the way Martin and Flemings built this ride. Apparently, they rushed construction on the ride and placed track down very poorly, which caused the ride to become rough. It also caused the trains to slow down in valley constantly, which explains why the ride has a few anti-rollbacks scattered throughout the course. Since 2007, however, the track profiling has since improved, and the ride no longer goes as slow as it first did. And there are no more rough patches besides the jackhammering after the drop in the back car, but the ride still doesn't achieve the speed the animation implies. I think that Martin and Vlaminx has since learned their lesson and have gone on to build some of the best woodies in the world, like Wooden Coaster Fireball and those Jungle Trailblazers. Nonetheless, it's still a great woody. So, for Boardwalk Bullet's final score, I'm going to give it a 9.5, and, and the reason I'm taking off that half point is the slight jackhammering, and because the ride doesn't run as fast as it should through some parts, but I still love this ride. It's super compact, and that's what makes this ride cool. The ride is built in layers, and the track always hugs onto one of the layers to allow the ride to fit into that small acre of space. And let me just say that this ride has some great head choppers. Personally, this is my current favorite Woody, and it really is worth the trip to Kima alone. But that's just how I feel about Boardwalk Bullet at Kima Boardwalk in Kima, Texas.
Let me know your thoughts on this ride in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time and have a Merry Christmas.